Jim Norton is not a doctor. He's not an expert. He's not even a good person. The views, opinions, advice, and humor of Jim Norton does not reflect those of any doctor, of Sirius XM, of OP Radio, or anyone else. They are solely those of Jim Norton, Lyle Chipperson, Edgar Mellencamp, Paul Hargis, and whoever else lives in that chinless head of his. If any of this advice goes wrong, you are the asshole who called a comedian instead of a doctor. An icon in comedy, a fighter for freedoms, an accomplished entertainer, and a pervert. You've got problems, he's got problems. You've got questions, he's got answers, some of which are good. Call now, 866-WOW-1WOW. That's 866-969-1969. This This is The Jim Norton Show. Oh, a fine afternoon to everybody who is listening. I appreciate it. I never get sick of the Ropers theme. It's literally my favorite piece of music. I even like that more than anything Sabbath has ever done. The Ropers theme song. Um, I guess where to start. Uh, I'm really, really tired today. I only got, probably over the last two nights, I've gotten maybe four, four and a half hours of sleep. Five hours maximum. I'm going to bed at a decent hour, but I'm, I'm in this rut where I'm just watching porn and texting with people and playing online chess. And like that does something to your, the signal in your head. I don't know exactly what it does, but it gets your brain in, in a weird place. You know, something fires. Cause then I just lay in bed. And my brain's like, I'm like, fuck it. I'm wide awake. So I'm trying to not do that as much, but it's hard not to. You know, when you're home and somebody wants to play in chess and you have your computer. I'm in that age group. I'm 47 where the computer is still such an amazing thing to me. You know, if you're 20 and you grew up with it, you probably don't give a shit. And uh, I shot my pilot yesterday. It's, it's called a pilot presentation. It's what happens is you, you know, uh, it's, a, it's something for the network to present to the executives. And I hope that they like it. But it went so much better than I thought it was going to go. Like the first show went great and the second show was just phenomenal. So if they don't do anything with it and they decide that I'm not for them, at least I won't regret what I did. Like I won't look at it and go, I suck. Like I know I did very, very well. So if they don't like it, it's absolutely, you know, it's out of my hands. And when you screw something up, then you start panicking like, oh, I'm a punk of shit. Why didn't I do it right? But there are those times where you do, I hate to say you did the best you can. But you know, I, I know I did it well. <clears throat> so hopefully they will enjoy it. And if they don't, well, I'll be bummed, but I won't doubt myself. Uh, Bryce in Texas, what's up? Hey, Jim, big hey. fan here, man. I saw you in uh, House of Blues in Dallas. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Yeah, it was an awesome show. My girlfriend hates you, but I love you. Um, That's the way it should be. Yeah, definitely. I laughed my ass off. Hey, I was curious who you thought is the single, like the best living comedian as of right now. It's a tough question, man. I mean, there's so many great, brilliantly funny guys. David Tell is a great comic. You know, Colin Quinn is probably my favorite working right now. Chappelle is such a great comedian. Uh, you know, you can't deny Chappelle is one of the funniest guys in the business. Um, you know, Louis is a great comic. It's really, really a tough question, dude. I, I would have, if I had to take the one, um, for me, it would be between a Colin and a Tell. But, you know, you could say Chris Rock or Chappelle, and that would be a great thing to say, too. You know what I mean? It's like, that's a yeah. really, really hard question. I kind of thought you were going to go more old school, like Don Rickles or something. No, you know, Rickles is very funny. And, and I love Don Rickles, and I respect him. But he doesn't make me laugh as hard as David Tell does. He doesn't make me laugh as hard as Colin does. Oh, right. But, you know, no, no, no. But I still have tremendous respect for Rickles. You know, um, what, I think what Rickles did was, was harder than what a lot of us do today. Because he was doing really, you know, crowd work, uh, you know, making mafia jokes to Sinatra in front of the mafia, you know. <laughs> yeah. You, so, you, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. it's just, it's a different style of humor that I like than, than that per se. People always compare me to Rickles. Like, you sound like Rickles. But I think that's just because of my head and my voice. But he was never, ever a creative influence on me. Um, but I do admire him a lot. And when I've met him, he was great. You know, um, he's like, you do me better than I do me. You know, because I guess I look and sound like him. But uh, he was never a creative influence. But thank you very much. That's a good question, and I wish I had a better answer for you. Yeah, man, appreciate it. Love the show. Bye, mister. What's up, Mark in New Jersey? Yeah. How are you? 
I'm doing all right. Uh, so I've been married now for six months, um, 28 years old. And, um, you know, ever since uh, me and my wife were living together, I, just, I don't know. I, just, I don't feel like, uh, you know, I, I want to have sex with her anymore. Um, why? Does she not like what she used to like? Or do you don't have any kids with her? No, no, no. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, just, it's just us. But it, I don't know. It's just I, I feel like I see her all the time now. It's not as, like, sexy. Like, you know, before before we got married, like, you know, we didn't live together. So we see each other mainly, like, on the weekends and stuff. And, um, you know, we'd go out, you know, drink and come back. It was hot. Now it's just, like... You know, it's all domesticated. You know, we're brushing our teeth, getting into bed. It's yeah. not, not sexy. Yeah, that kind of sucks, dude. That, that's what married people always complain about. So why don't you uh, talk to her about it and just see if you guys can change that? Can't you do something to change it? Uh, I mean, yeah. I, I, I kind of tell her, like, hey, you know, because she, she knows. Like, she, cause she's, she still wants to have sex with me. Like, she still, you know, kind of, like, you know, puts her hand down there and you know she makes the moves and i'm just like eh, i'm not feeling it well what is it you want her to do differently i, it, I don't i don't think i just want her to do anything differently it's, i it just like now that it's like it feels like they're so domestic like i just feel, feel like it's here like all the time now it's just like eh, you know i don't know uh, well, maybe that's it then. Maybe it's just that there's no more challenge. And like you see, you already see the ceiling. Like, you know, okay, this is the woman I'm with. So you don't have to get her anymore. Uh, you know, maybe that's part of the problem. I've never been married, dude. But they, people do say that's a big problem. Is you know, you get married and all of a sudden you're like, ugh. You yeah, know? I, I just, I, I really don't want to cheat. Like, I, you know, I do get like approached a lot. And, you know, it's just like it's. It's hard. Like I don't, I don't feel like necessarily she's doing anything wrong. It's just like I, I figured I'd always be in a situation where you know I would be married, but I didn't think like things would change that much. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's just your mental state of mind too. Like she may be the same person, but um, you know, you just know that you're married to, and you're like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't go out and cheat. Give it some time, dude. Give it some time to get used to it and stop panicking. <laughs> All right. Give it some time. Put a put a mini skirt on her. Do something perverted. All right, I'll give it a shot. Bye. Bye. Hi, Brian in Alabama. What's up, Jim? Uh, hey. Congratulations on the show and all your specials, man. They're great. You Thank look you. great. You're healthy. Good God, you got me eating Nutra Ninja drinks and shit in the morning, smoothies and. Oh, uh, good, good, good. Well, I, I hope the show get, goes somewhere. I, I can't be congratulated yet. I'm just happy that it's... Well, actually. I mean, yeah, I think it's going somewhere. I mean, you're turning bad experiences into, you know, advice for other people that need it. So it can't it can be a bad thing. But, hey, look, here's my here's my situation. It's been a while. Um, yeah, I was talking to this sexy girl. Uh, uh, but her friends told me it, it, she's not a prostitute, but she has turned tricks before. Right. Um which kind of, you know, and I just read in the newspaper, uh, Alabama was number one in the nation for STDs um, just a, about a month ago. And so I know me too well sexually. You know, when I when I started having sex, I'm all over the place. I'm eating pussy and ass and sucking sure. toes and fingers. And, you know, I wear a condom. But then, you know, it's like, what's the point of condom if I have my face, you know, in our in our asshole? You know, is it just a 50-50 risk? I mean, you know, if I'm even scared, should I just, just, but I don't know, man. What do you, <laughs> the risk factor. Well, why don't you ask her to see your paperwork? You could probably do that with a regular girl. Like, you know, oh. a girl a girl who hadn't turned tricks, you would probably want to see paperwork on anyway, right? And she'll want to see it on you. Yeah, well, this girl's, this girl's very... We are on two different sides of the tracks. Um, I'm like I'm a middle class white boy. She's very ghetto. Uh, lives in the hood, but really wants a man. She's really damn sexy. So if I say, let me see your papers, she what what fucking papers? <laughs> I don't know what you're gonna say. Well, you, you should say that. You should say that it's one of those things where, uh, hey, with any person, I like to, you know, make sure that we're both okay and show. Dis I, she she would be an idiot if she was angry at that. She, if she turned tricks, she yeah. should understand that. Right, right, right. Because, uh, yeah, and it even worried me more when her friend told me what, she was only charging 50. And the girl's she's only 20, but beautiful. 
gorgeous. She um, sounds awesome, like $50? dude. $50? She is under uh, under charging if she's doing that, but okay. Well, yeah, yeah, papers. Papers sounds a way to go. She sounds awesome. Right. Yeah, just get, look at her results, that's all. Good. Well, all right, Jim. Well, good luck with everything, brother, and uh, right. good luck. Goodbye. Hello, Lady Di in New Jersey. <clears throat> hey, hi. How you doing? Good. How are you? Okay, listen, um, I wanted to find out something. Maybe you would know about this. Um, is there any truth? Uh, to me, taking over Sam's old shift, you know, the, the 12 to 2. Um, hmm. Do you, know, how, do, you know anything, do you know anything about that? Because how, it's all over Twitter and stuff. How did you hear about that? Well, I have Twitter on my phone. Oh, I got to be honest. You never cease to amaze me. Uh, well, no, no, no. It's not, you know, I mean, somebody actually showed me an article from the New York Post. Oh, which, all right. Uh, I mean, I you know, I don't know if there's any truth to that. All right. Well, let's you know, let's just what, say this. If there were, I'm not at liberty to say. Um, until until maybe, you know, if contracts are discussed, um, you know, I'm not allowed to interfere with that. So for legal reasons, no, I, I, I can't was just, comment. I was just wondering if Opie, you know, um, announced it on the air or something like that, that I was going to be, you know. Taking over that shift, I don't. I, I I have no idea. Well, have you been talking to serious management? Uh, well, no. Um, have you, you been know, lobbying uh, for a show? Obviously, you've you've been talking to the upper management at Sirius. So, what's you tell me what's going on? No, no, I I have no idea what's going on. All I know is people on Twitter are telling me, okay, all right, you know, people that listen to the show and everything like that. I can't listen to the show because I don't have XM. All right, they're telling me that it was that it it's it was on there, you know, saying that you know I'm going to take over Sam's old spot. Well, Sam is probably pretty angry that that he was kicked out of that spot, and uh, it no, does make sense. Angry. He likes he likes he likes being on nights. All right, you tell yourself whatever you want. Um, yeah, well, if you're going to do that spot, good luck to you. I, I'm not allowed to talk about that day. I, I got to say that. It's between All right. management, okay? I'm not permitted to comment on that. Okay. All right. Not until so the contracts I, I, are signed. I just, I, I just thought that uh, maybe you know anything about that. Well, even if I do, I'm not allowed to confirm it or deny it. All right. Okay. All right. Goodbye. I love you. Bye-bye. I love you too, Di. Thank you. Uh, Joe in Kansas. Ladies and gentlemen, it just doesn't... I, it never ceases to amaze me, Lady Di. Uh, yes, Joe. Hello? Hello? Hey, buddy. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good, thanks. So, yeah, I've been dating my girl for like three years, and uh, I'm always the one that has to negotiate. At first, I didn't have to negotiate sex at all. Now it's like, I almost feel creepy because I'm the only one negotiating it. So I wonder if they help me out. Well, what does she do? Like, you try, she, if you don't start it, she'll never start never. it? Never. She will. She'll be like, she'll be like, oh, you know, there was your chance. Oh, like, I'm like, what? Like she, I don't want to say never. There's there's some points where she will, but I can never like, you know, I it, it doesn't happen often enough to like be easy. I guess I don't know if that's the right. Yeah, way that's to say. annoying too. You don't always want to be the one who starts it. Sometimes you want the woman to start it. Um, is she uh, dominant or submissive sexually? Submissive. Oh yeah, of course. Now, did you tell her that you wanted her to uh, start it once in a while? What'd she say? Well, yeah, I mean, I brought it up, like, I'm like, well, you know, I, I brought up, like, I was like, oh, you know, I feel kind of, you know, creepy sometimes, because I'm like, I feel like, you know, I'm forcing you to have sex or something like that, and she, like, she just, like, not even freak out, but she's like, no, it's not it at all, she's just like, you know, you know, she's, she's a little, she's a little heavier, so she's kind of like, she, she doesn't feel like she's comfortable in her body, she says, so, like, she brings that up a lot, but I'm like, no, 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 I, I love you, you know, for other stuff, and, you know, that's, I don't know, it just, it just gets kind of frustrating. Yeah, I mean, nobody wants to be the one to always have to initiate it. You should ask her to start initiating. <clears throat> Tell her you want her to. Uh, yeah. And then the first time she does, smack her hand and say, get away from me, fatty. <laughs> <laughs> now, get your there, fat hands there, off me. But, What's that? Well, you, you know, just tell her what you want, man. That's always the best way to do it. You know what I mean? Let 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 her know that that's what you want. And, Is there any way to do that like during sex so it's not like... Well, I mean, like, it's, would, you, would you suggest doing it during sex or, like, just casually, like, talking about it? Because I know there's definitely two ways of doing it, like asking her about it. 
I would talk about it outside of bed. This way she doesn't feel pressure in the moment. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah. you, know, you, can, you can talk to her about it in bed or if, if you want her to uh, put her pussy on your face or whatever or be a bit more dominant. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So, yeah. uh, you know, sometimes you got to lead somebody a little bit. That's all. Yeah. You just got to right. lead them a little bit. All right, Luke Jimmy. Well, thank you very much, man. Big fan. All right, brother. Good luck. All right. Bye. Hey, what's up, Sean in Long Island? Take my call. Um, called you a couple of weeks ago, actually. Been seeing this girl for a very brief amount of time, but she's cool and things seem to go well, but she's very insecure and has low self esteem about herself. And right. we're still kind of dating. We're not like in an official <clears throat> committed relationship. I'm not seeing anyone else, and neither is she, but we haven't really made it official, but. Her insecurities and self-esteem issues have caused already two pretty big major fights that were initiated by her. How and, long um, you been here? I, I mean, a couple of weeks, a month maybe. I mean, it's really early for any of this stuff to be happening. Um, so, you know, I like this girl, but she constantly twists everything I say. Every little word I say, she's taking the wrong way. If I text her... If, you, know, you know, verbally or even through the phone, she just takes it and she twists it the wrong way. I have to constantly, constantly reassure her that I'm interested and that I like her. And, um, I mean, we had two blowouts already. One was last weekend. I left her house at four in the morning because she just, she's so scared and nervous and she doesn't, you know, she's not used to being in a, you know, to meeting someone that she likes. And, um, she's so nervous and scared about me and, and how things are going that she, I guess kind of pushes men away, and that's kind of what she did to me last week, and she literally just tore me apart for no reason, like 3.30 in the morning, just got done having sex, and she was just freaking out and just tore me up for no reason. She bipolar? And, uh, I don't know. I, I've i kind of talked to her. I'm, I'm a pretty level-headed guy. Um, I've dated a lot. I was a psych major. Not that I'm trying to psychoanalyze her, but maybe I have a tendency to do that. Sure. Um, but you know, I, it was a pretty, it was pretty nasty. And I, I, like I said, I got pissed off. I left. I didn't really want to talk to her again. But it was the first time it happened. I gave her the benefit of the doubt, and I said, you know what? Maybe it was a one-time thing. Even though internally, in my gut, I knew that this would probably happen again. So um, you know, we we kept seeing each other, and then last night she came over. She worked late. And um, she was upset because she called me earlier in the day and she didn't think I was excited when she called me. And Yeah, uh, you know what, dude? I, I know what you're saying. Look, that, that drives me nuts. We're all a little insecure. We all need the occasional pat on the back. Like, hey, I, I care about you. I love you. But those fucking emotional tampons, and I, you know, it's the worst. And they come over and they pick fights at you in three in the morning when you got to get up for fucking work in the morning. Drives me ballistic. So you got to lay down the law because you, I think it's reasonable to go, look, if, you, if your insecurity keeps interfering and you keep starting shit, I'm just going to end this relationship. Like, why? Well, I, I, who needs that I, shit? I agree. That's kind of what happened last night. You know, it keeps, it keeps coming up and it keeps manifesting itself into this physical argument. And she's picking fights. And I said, I don't want to keep having arguments with you at 2 in the morning. I got to work. I got shit to do. So I got pissed off. And I told her to leave. And I was like, look, I don't want to do this with you. This is not going to work. I like you. But clearly, you're not okay enough with yourself. That shit between me and you can work out. And she's like, no, no, no. It's not a pattern. And I'm like, yeah, you know, obviously it is. So I sent her pack. And I mean, you know, I kind of, I just want to make sure I'm making the right move. I mean, I, my gut and my experience in life tells me that this is probably something that won't work. Right. I just wanted to hear what you thought about it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the girl, but it definitely sounds like a pattern, and th those are the worst. When girls start to get into that fucking crazy, the ones who always start with you, you, you know early on if someone's going to pull that shit. And uh, right. you know, usually, I mean, you know, maybe give her one more shot at doing it, but if it happens again and it's unreasonable, just dump her. All right, man. I'll try it one more time. Thanks, bro. <clears throat> Good luck, you little doll. Uh, let's see here. Mark in New York wants to get a massage. What's up, Mark? Hey, Jimmy, how you doing? Great, how are you? Good. I want to get, like, a real massage. No funny business or anything. Sure. I never had one. Do I ask for a girl or a guy? Is it gay to ask for a guy? No. Uh, if you, you, are, you, you want a legit massage and you, and you don't want to be sexually aroused, and if a guy won't sexually arouse you, no, that's not gay at all to say, I want someone who won't sexually arouse me. Okay. And what, what do you wear? Like, just underwear? 
Now, when they cover you with something, you know, I mean, they have a towel or they have sheets that they wrap around you. Go if you go to a spa, a legitimate place, they'll they'll cover you probably. All right. Okay. I just didn't know if it was gay to ask for a guy, so I, no, I better not get aroused. Huh? <laughs> no. All right. All right. Thanks, man. Okay, buddy. Uh, let's see here. Um, bah, 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 bah. How about Ryan in Florida? All right. How are you? Hey, Jimmy. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, recently, I had gone home to uh, visit my brother, and uh, he works at a strip club and ended up meeting a, a dancer there, and we hit it off pretty well. We exchanged phone numbers. I didn't really think anything of it. And uh, we started talking, and uh, I'm kind of skeptical about dating a stripper. I don't know as far as trusting them, uh, if it would work long distance or not. Yeah, long um, distance strippers a tough relationship. You know, she's, she's doing it only to go through school, and she's like, I don't even like doing it. And she's like, I have to drink just to get through, you know, just to get through the day. They all say really- that. They all say that. I hate doing it, and I drink. They drink all night. They're like, I'm just drinking to get through it. And some of them, that might be true. But, you know, look, dude, just take it slow with this one and realize she might be bullshitting you, and that might be who she really is, and that's her life, which is fine if you can handle it. Um, Or maybe she is being truthful with you. Just don't 100% go, yeah, she's being truthful, and, you know, you might get let down. Just give, you know, take it with a grain of salt, as we say. Well, I mean, she's flying out to see me. So, I mean, she's playing for an airline ticket. So I take that as a good sign, I guess. I mean, she's not asking me to pay for it. And, I mean, we hit it off great, like, on the phone and stuff. And she really, really, like I said, wants to meet me. I'm just very, you know, kind of skeptical about, you know, does she do this? Do all strippers act like that? Or can I, you know, could there actually be a, a stripper out there that actually has a good conscience and wants oh, yeah, to Yeah, a lot of them. Sure, of course, a lot of them. Yeah, of course. So, you know, it's just her job. So, uh, I, I, you know, give it a shot. I mean, she's willing to come out and bang you. There's, what are you going to lose? Just give it a shot and don't put your whole heart into it. Just enjoy it. All right. I just want to get your thoughts on it. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, I love the show, and uh, hopefully you'll come out to Fort Lauderdale soon. Thank you. I am actually going to go there probably in January or February. All right. Looking forward to seeing you. Thanks. Joe in Oregon, what's up? Uh, you know, I'm a... I, I I'm a, a big fucking pervert, you know, and uh, welcome and, to the club, uh, Joe. <laughs> Well, I like to I like my wife fucking the uh, fucking other guys, okay. And I like and there's this new guy that uh, that she's fucking, and you know she tells me what a really nice cock he has and what a good fuck he is and all this, and and part of the deal is that I'm involved in some way. I get to be there or FaceTime or whatever because right. I also drive the truck. I'm on the road a lot. So I want her to, you know, be experience pleasure when I'm not there and stuff. So that's part of it. But the part that's uh, getting difficult for me is that I also get jealous at the sure. same time. Yes. It's some kind of weirdness going on with me where, like, I want her to get, you know, like, it turns me on. I fucking jerk off and shit and come really fast and she tells me about it and or like if I'm FaceTiming with her while well, she's doing it, I, I start to come really quick, you know, and hard and stuff. And then I kind of get jealous about it later on when the excitement's worn off or yep. or whatever. And I need to... You get what they call buyer's remorse. It's buyer's remorse. Where as soon as you blow the load, you're like, oh, no, you just want her to stop and tell him to leave. I understand. Part of it, the jealousy is it's something. Like, there's a lot of times, dude, that, that, that's the same feeling I would get, that jealous, that pit of the st- in the stomach feeling. And sometimes that's part of the turn on. It's just we are feeling something. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's not numbness. So I don't know if that's the only turn on. But is the, how is she when you tell her you're jealous? Say that again. How, how does she react when you tell her you're getting jealous? Uh, you know, she's like, well, I can stop if you want. You know, she really, she really, uh, you know, is empathetic about it. You know, she doesn't want me to, she, you know, she, she assures me that, you know, I'm number one. She loves me. And, you know, it, it's all about, you know, it, Hey, if this is going to hurt something with us, then it's over today, right? Right this second, you know? Well, so, that's good. That's good. At least you have the option of telling her to stop or asking her to stop if you don't want her to do it. Yeah, and that, you know, and the weird part about that is that kind of feeds into, you know, I guess like that, you know, you have that, that inner self that 
fucking hates yourself. And that kind of comes out with me where I go, you know, what a fucking asshole I am, you know? I mean, I tell her it's okay and, you know, set it all up and all this and fucking come like a, like a madman and, you know, and then at the same time, you know, I, I tell her that I get a little jealous and then she, she understands that and says it's over. And then I fucking hate myself because look what a great woman I have. And, and, uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah, it's like you're setting yourself up. Yeah. Instead of just being, enjoy it. Just realize, look, what we're doing is perverted. She's willing to stop. It turns me on. It turns her on. It's fun. What's the harm in it? Like, think about it. It's like you're swingers in a way. What's the harm in it? Like, you don't need to take it and club yourself with it. Like, if you really enjoy yeah, it and she really enjoys it, there's no reason to feel guilty or bad about it. Yeah, I guess that's true. I think that's like, you know, years of society like, telling, telling us, you know, it should be one-on-one and, you know, this is the way you have married sex and all that. And we're, yeah. we're like way outside of those lines, you know, because we're also thinking about doing swinging and this kind of thing. And, you know, like I said, I'm a big pervert. and She's a fucking pervert, too. And, you know, that's kind of what makes it work for us a lot. Yeah, don't, so, don't. Uh, I think you're right. Yeah, don't make yourself feel terrible about it. If you don't like it, then you stop it. But don't if you if you're both enjoying it and you know that she's willing to stop and she puts you first, just enjoy it. There's no reason to be fucking silly about it. Have fun. If the Bible, if the Bible was written you know when there was that? Facebook and Twitter, I'm sure a few of the commandments would have been different. Yeah, you know what? That's that's great advice, Jimmy. I appreciate it. All right, enjoy. Let's see here. Uh Frank in Brooklyn. Oh, Frank lost better. Hey Frank. How you doing, pal? Good. How are you? I'm trying to get out of the. Um... All right. So I met this chick. I'm starting to realize it might be a, uh, a guy, but she's really hot. She's got huge tits, and, and I don't know. I want to make a move on her. I don't know what to do. Well, what do you mean you met her? Have you gone on dates with her? Uh, we met driving. I was driving a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of days ago. I don't know. When I looked over and we pulled over, we switched numbers. I started talking to her. She started sending me pictures of them, and she asked if I was married. I said, yeah. But I don't know, something about it. She seemed, you know, like half black, half, I don't know what she is. Sure. But I don't know how I would approach her. Do I go out with her and then find out? Or, or, you know, I don't know what to do. Well, um, has she sent you any nude photos? I, I, at the top, the top, yeah. She sent me a titties and shit, but nothing else. Oh, but not the, uh, yeah. pussy, uh... uh uh, not the big cock or the little vagina. Well, you know, I mean, did it, would you still want to fuck her if she was uh, trans or no? I'm not sure, man. Or if she seemed really cool, though. Why don't you just go like, out with her and see what happens? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to make that decision right now. You don't want to say to her, are hey, you a tranny? You know, because there's no good answer to that. Like, if she is, she's going to be bummed that you noticed. And if she's not, she's going to be like, what? Like, I, mean, I was talking to I was talking to Jimmy. I had a fucking hard on, I, I, like I had a, like a little fourteen year old boy again. Yeah, it's perverted. It's you know you, you're meeting somebody who doesn't care that you're married. I mean that's that's part of the hot part about it is the fact that you just met her randomly. Yeah. So, what's that? I was taking. I was almost taking it out while she was talking to me. Yeah, I know. I know that instinct, man. Uh, so you don't have to make a decision right now. Just fucking enjoy talking to her. Yeah, I'm gonna see what happens to you tonight. I'll let you know how it goes, man. Thanks. Yeah, please do. Enjoy it. And if she's a, if she's a tranny, then fucking, you know, be a team player. Blow her first. Show her that you care. <laughs> All right? All right, Jimmy. Thank you. All right, buddy. See you. Hey, what's up, John in Texas? Jimmy, how you doing, man? Great. How are you? Hey, uh, I'm a big, lifelong Sabbath fan, and oh, uh, I'm planning on going to this final tour, flying out to Vegas, and I got a... I got a possibility of getting a VIP meet and greet. And uh, I just want to know, you know, I haven't done that situation before, and I just don't really know what to say or ask in the 30 seconds or a minute of which I'm going to estimate it's going to probably have with the guys. I want to know, like, uh, I just don't want to come across the, as a total douche fanboy. You know, what's a good thing to say or ask in that situation? And then... Maybe uh, just give me some of your thoughts just about the whole end of the uh, Sabbath uh, adventure here. Well, here's what you say. When you walk up to each one of them, you should say, album by album, can you walk me through your feelings at the time? What was your mood? 
Uh, make it no. Here's what you have to realize with people like that: in a quick thirty second meeting, you're not going to say anything that has impact on them. And it's nothing to do with you, and it's nothing to do with them being rude. It's just you're meeting a lot. They're meeting a lot of people, and they're grateful that you're a fan. But if they gave true, like, oh, well, let me talk to you for a few minutes, and there's 100 people there, it's hard for them to do that. So basically, you just say whatever it is you'd want them to know. What, what they do with it doesn't matter. You're not going to make an ass out of yourself if you're like, hey, look, I love you. They've heard that. Nothing you say is something that they haven't heard. That's the thing that we all try to do is we try to find the unique thing that we can say that will make us stand out. And it just doesn't happen. You know what I mean? Like I had met those guys a shitload of times. I had interviewed them a bunch of times before they really even started remembering me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, the first time I interviewed them, I think the second time I saw them, like Tony and Bill, they might have recognized me, but not, oh, yeah, all right. You know, no impact whatsoever. You know, so in a 30 second, it's really, really hard to have an impact. Just realize that um, I've done radio shows that people do, and I don't remember them. I've been on their show. That it's nothing personal. Tell them you love them. Tell them that their music means a lot to you. They'll say thank you, and they'll mean it, and then just move on. Um, and how do I feel about it? It's probably, look, Tony's got cancer, so, you know, I think it's getting really hard for him to keep up the tour schedule. So I just hope that his health is okay. And, um, you know, I, I wish Bill was back. Like, you know, Tommy's doing a good job, but, you know, I miss Bill Ward just because I missed the original four, but I'm still going to go see them anyway. They're amazing live. Yeah, um, just a quick follow-up question about, about Bill. Do you know anything from the inside about why he's not in the tour? Is it something with Sharon, or what's the deal? No, everybody blames Sharon. And the bottom line was, I think, and, they, and, and the guys have all said this publicly, too, but, uh, you know, Bill, this is their side of it, was uh, they were going to give him less money. And the bottom line was they felt like, look, you know, Bill doesn't even play when we're not playing. And then this was their argument. Like, you know, we're out there. I'm out, Ozzy's like, he's, I'm, I'm out there doing gigs or whatever. And Bill doesn't even play. Now, that may not be true. I don't know. But um, no, that's not a Sharon decision. You know, Sharon may advise Ozzy, but Sharon can't tell Tony Iommi what to do. You know, Sharon doesn't tell Geezer Butler what to do. She's just, you know, she's Ozzy's manager. So, you know, Tony has a manager, so does Geezer, and so does Bill. Uh, you know what I mean? And Tony Iommi is Tony Iommi. He's not going to be bossed around by anybody. So I think that, uh, you know, it's a money issue with all of them, and now it's gotten a little bit of the prides involved. But uh, whatever, man. I, I just hope that they talk it out because they're such old friends. I'm sure they could bury the hatchet and, and finish out together. That would, that would be awesome. I'm looking forward to the show, too. Hopefully, if they don't tour anymore, so maybe they can do just like in-residency uh, things where we can go see them. That would be lovely. Thanks very much, buddy. Yeah. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. Uh, let's see here. Lee in Florida. <laughs> a little background information for you. I was a wannabe doctor, so I know different things between men and women in terms of their bone structure and their hands, things like that. A friend of mine gets into a relationship, and I tell the guy, this is not a girl, it's a guy. And he goes, no, it's got breasts, it's got the vagina, it's got, it doesn't have an Adam's apple. And I explain to him, you can do all those procedures nowadays, but you can look at the hands, you can look at the hips, you can look right. at certain structures. Anyway, at the end of the day, he finds out from where he asks her, and she admits to being, yes, I was once a male, but I'm fully a girl now. I always felt to be a girl, blah, blah, blah. And I said, as far as I'm concerned, he was raped. No. Am I stupid? No, you're not stupid, but I, I don't think he was raped because... Rape is an act of, of force and power. Like, the difference is, like, she lied to him about something. Let's just say she lied about her intentions. Let's say she said, I love you, but she didn't love him. Is, was he raped? Let's say she was married and didn't tell him. Uh, you know what I mean? Or let's say every guy that is married and lies to a girl just to fuck her. Is he raping that girl by lying to her? Um, people lie to get laid. It's not the right thing to do. But lying and rape, I think, are, are very separate things. Uh, I think rape is a, a really harsh term to put on that. Deceptive and shitty, yeah. But he had the warning and he did it anyway. And um, even if he didn't have the warning and had no idea, he was just deceived. And I think deception is shitty, but I do not equate it at all with rape. I appreciate your answer. I'll think about treating her or it differently. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's, a, it's a her. Or if it's just a him who is a her who, you know, whatever. But, you know, that's a, that's a hard life to live, so, you know. 
do like each other. I mean, they kind of make a good couple. <laughs> it's funny as hell that they do make a good couple. That's all but that I, matters. That, you know, you know, if you know what you're getting into, I guess you're fine. But and you know, it to me though, it was just done under false pretense, and it was just morally wrong. I guess. Oh yeah, you can say that, sure. But you know, rape is a, is a harsh one, dude, right? Yeah. All, all right, right, my friend. Goodbye, Lee. Uh, what's up, Jen in Pennsylvania? Ten. How are you? Um, I'm all right. I wanted to get some advice from a man that will not sugarcoat anything, so I figured I'd call in. Okay. Um, I was heavily pursued by a man. I wasn't really into the idea of being in a relationship. I'm a more, you know, independent, educated female and just wasn't really looking for anything, but... He came into my life, and we ended up dating for six months, very serious, you know, hanging with each other's families, really a serious situation, and he brought up the idea of getting engaged, you know, what kind of ring do you like, show my sister, um, you know, I never brought up those conversations, and three weeks after that conversation, out of nowhere, he's like, I don't want this anymore. So I'm just curious, like, and he will not elaborate. He swears that there's nobody else, but he just won't say, you know, I got scared or nothing. So I was just curious if you could help me out. Well, I, you know, again, maybe I don't know the guy, but sometimes people just get scared and panic or sometimes they just change their mind. Sometimes it's the thrill of the hunt and the idea of it. And then when it's right there, it's like, oh, no, I don't want that. You know, there could be 50 reasons why he backed out. But if, if he's backing out and he's backing out, you don't really even need to know. Like, just accept the fact that for whatever reason, he's backing out. You can either believe his reason or not. It doesn't matter. All right. Makes sense to me, Jen. Thank you. All right, Jen. Take care. Yeah. All right, goodbye. Uh, another Jen in Michigan. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jimmy. Hi. Hi. Hey, um, so a couple weeks ago, I was doing it with my husband, and he made me squirt. And I've done it a couple of times, and one time it was like the porn stars. It was like a lot. And it kind of weirds me out a little bit. And I don't know, like, what, what, what about squirting turns the guy on? It's just something different. It's warm, and it's proof that we're doing a good job. And, uh, you know, you can have it in your face. It's a, it's a very visceral experience. It's a very tactile thing. You know, you don't have to wonder if she's coming. She's shooting it all over you like a fucking fire hose. It's phenomenal. Let him enjoy it. So, like, quanti I mean, like, the quantity is not gross to a guy? Like, I did it way more than I, like, thought it was, you know? No, it's not gross. Not at all. No? Okay. It's awesome. Right. Enjoy it. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, next weekend, to Detroit. What's that? Go to Detroit. Oh, good. I'll see you in Detroit. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Hey, Scott in Florida. What's up, buddy? Hey, Jim. Um, I've been you know, struggling with addiction. I've been clean for um, almost two years now from okay. drugs and alcohol, but just still you know, struggling with uh, pornography and, you know, and women and just justify that as something that, you know, hey, I'm, I'm not doing the other stuff. This isn't as bad. And I'm just sure. I'm really struggling with, with feeling convicted about that and doing what I, I know is the right thing. Yeah, it's a really hard one, man. We replaced it. Some people overeat. Some people just jerk off like lab animals. That's what I tend to do. Really, really tough, uh, you know, to just be totally free of everything. That's why people pick up smoking or all this stuff. If it's bothering you, I mean, look, just start to work on, on putting down the porn and stop watching it. Uh, if, it, if it's causing you a tremendous moral dilemma or you just hate it, um, well, you know. I, guess, I guess I don't hate it, <laughs> and you know, but I, I guess I do know it's wrong. And um, well, it's wrong if it's if it's interfering with your life and interfering with your relationships with other people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not wrong just to jerk off on principle, but um, you know, if, if it's interfering with things, and, and then make a move to stop it.
Yeah, you know? well, I also justify that just because, you know, my wife and I have children and our sex life went from, you know, being just this crazy, outrageous thing into, hey, we're parents now and it just doesn't happen the same way. So I guess that's another way I justify it. I'm like, well, you know, I'm not getting that life at home anymore. Let me at least fantasize about it. Yeah, uh, but if it becomes addictive, that's where it gets to be bad and isolating. And I'm telling you, dude, one of the reasons... I have a hard time sleeping. It's when I jerk off watching porn right before bed. It fucks me up, man. It really does. Like, my brain just moves faster. It, it's, it's like it won't let me relax. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really bad in that way. So, you know, it does have definitely an effect that's not positive. So if you want to quit doing it, there's no bad effects to stopping porn. You know, yeah. that's the worst thing. Doing it could be bad for you to keep doing it, but stopping will never be bad for you. But the bottom line is you just got to, I mean, I guess it's just got to stop. I know, I know I want to, and I know I need to. It's a matter of doing it, just like the drugs or alcohol. Yes. And uh, if, if you're already getting ready to do it, maybe you'll do it. I've known it's been an addiction and a problem for so many years, and it's, just, it's the toughest one by far. Yep. All right. Well, I appreciate your advice, man. Yeah. <laughs> Be good. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. A, uh, uh, John in Virginia. What's up, John? Hey, how's it going, Jim? How you How doing? You? Good. Um, I was calling because uh, recently I had my father died from cancer. It was pretty, you know, fucking brutal. He was one of the yeah. few people in my family that I could, you know, kind of rely on and trust, stuff like that. But he died, and it's just kind of both sides of my family were alcoholics and smokers, and, you know, that's kind of what I am. But I'm with, you know, the best woman of my life, uh, my girl now, and her family is completely health oriented. I actually live right near them and it's just, you know, I'm trying to find a reason to get, I guess, out of the smoke, you know, smoking and drinking, but it just, it, it keeps coming back, man. I mean, but our, I mean, our sex life is great. She's into all the stuff I introduced her to and it's just boiling it down to that, I guess. It's just, I, I mean, I've got medication. I've tried patches, shit like that. It's just, I mean, it's hard to convince myself to do it. I think I keep just, you know, hanging on the crap I shouldn't. But yeah, I mean, the drinking I would suggest before the smoking, if that's a big problem, try one at a time. Doing both would be really hard. Okay. Uh, you know, try one at a time. Try the drinking first. But if if you think that there's starting to be a problem and things are good, but you can see that this is just not the way to go, then stop now. So you're not having this conversation ten years from now. Like you don't want to waste the next ten years doing this. So you might as well just go. You know what? It, it's time to to stop it. And, uh, you know, just just deal with the discomfort of it now because eventually you're going to have to anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Just, just do it. Just, 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 just you know, the, the cancer death is really hard, but you don't want to use that as an excuse to keep getting fucked up, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, and I watch it too, man. I mean, it's awful. I definitely don't want to go like that. It's just like I see that and then I also have, you know, the chemical addiction that just, you know, pushes on your brain. It's just screwing me up. But Yeah, but watching someone die of cancer will be a motivation to stop. Yeah, absolutely. So now you've had your motivation. You know that it does exist and it does happen. And it, you know, it really, once it's past a certain point, it's unfixable. So why don't you just stop what you're doing? I mean, that's easier said than done, but the answer is very simple. Yeah, absolutely. You already know what you got to do. Yeah. Well, thank right. you, man. I love you, dude. Thank you, buddy. Good luck. All right. uh, let's see here. Uh, Mike in Denver. What's up? Hey, Jim. What's going on? Mike. Hey, Jim. I um, wanted to find out if you have any advice. I love going to comedy shows. It's I recently here in Denver. Um, a lot of great, uh, there's a great local scene here. I'm not a comedian. I go to a couple shows. I even go to open mics, but I'd be interested in doing some booking and being an agent. How does one even start something like that? Wow, I have no idea. I, right. I, I don't know. How do you become an agent? I do not know. Because right. comedians are going to trust people. Um who they've worked with before or who they know has a track record. I have no idea how you'd be... Maybe work for an agency. You, know, you might have to work for an agency, a talent agency, and then you have to go and learn the ropes. You can't just well, think like... Thing, hey, yeah, in Denver, there are none. That's what people are... The comedians are complaining about, so... Well, maybe you offer someone and say, look, we don't have to sign anything. Can I make a few phone calls for you? Like, why don't you approach someone and go, look, I want to try this. You don't have a manager. I'll try to do this stuff for you, and we'll learn it together. Find someone who's kind of new. All right. I got some people in mind. I'll call back in a month or two and let you know. Yeah, yeah. Ask them and see what they say. Like, you're not going to get an established guy, but uh, somebody new maybe want to take the chance. Cool, man. 
All right. Come back to Denver real soon. We would love having you here. Thanks, man. Bye-bye. Stephen Maine, what's up? You quit everything. Yeah, I mean, I started when I was freaking 13, man. I was a victim of sex abuse when I was a kid, and I just kicked that shit off right. Okay. And, uh, you know, I, I've done everything. Heroin, coke, crack. I mean, I've quit all the shit by myself. No problems. A huge alcoholic. You know, that shit runs in my family. I have no problem with not drinking anymore. Right. It's, it's fucking tobacco, man. I cannot get away from the tobacco. It is by far the hardest. Uh... You know, I quit smoking. I was, uh, in 2001, I quit. I did the patch, and I did the patch the way they suggest to do the patch. You know, there's always that temptation when we do it, like, I'm going to do it my way. But the key is just do it like the patch suggests, and um, you'll be surprised how, uh, how well it goes for you. You know, don't do it for a week, and then you go, I do it on my own. Just actually do it the way they suggest to do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the, yeah, the, I mean, it's obviously not working doing it on my own because I've quit 80 times and I've started smoking again 81, you know. Yeah, it's, a, it's a hard one, man. It's a real, don't, you know, don't uh, get down on yourself. It's a really hard one. But uh, if, you're, if you're, you really want to quit, you can and you will quit. All right, man. All right, good luck, buddy. Thank you. Sure. Hey, what's up? Colin in New Jersey. Hey, Jimmy. How are you? Hey, uh, thanks for taking a call. Um, so I have a ridiculously awesome hot wife. And a 14 month old, and I probably gained about 35 pounds in the past two and a half years. And okay. I just, I'll try to to stay away from junk food and get off soda and everything. But I work in a, a deep fried wing major restaurant. Right. There. And uh, I'm kind of around bad food all the time, and I just don't know what else to do. Like I want to be there when my daughter is like you know 15 or whatever, but I'm getting up there. Yeah, I mean, food's a brutal one because you got to eat. Um, you, sometimes that maybe that helps. Every time you go to eat a wing, just think you want to see your daughter graduate or you want to see your grandkids. You know, for me, I found a good diet. Once I started seeing results, that's what worked for me. You know, once I, I just got to a point where I got sick of it. I just got fucking sick of it. And once you get sick of it and you start moving and you go, fuck it, I'm not going to look in the mirror every day. I'm not going to obsess about results. And then all of a sudden, you'll look back a week from then, two weeks from then, and go, oh, man, I lost a couple of pounds. Did you exercise? Uh, not particularly. I was hit by a drunk driver about three years ago. So my back, I have a back of probably like a 50, 60-year-old male, and I'm oh, okay. 31. So it, it's like I can't run for a long period of time. Like It's hard to be athletic. Like I take pain medication and stuff like that. And But uh, it, it's a struggle. It's definitely not uh, – I have not – tried to make anything even like like yoga which i heard works or or some stuff like that i've never i've never really put in the effort yeah put that. in the effort that's all you got to want to do it because you're very heavy but you can lose it 30 pounds is doable man it's not that you're not morbidly obese so before you get to that point working in that place maybe you can find a new job um but i you know just you you already got the motivation. So go out there and just start doing it. You know, it's never, that's the hardest part is just making myself start anything and then realizing it's going to take a little while before I see the results because I'm a quick fix junkie. But, uh, you know, I, you're already off to the right start. All right, thanks, brother. Be good. All right, buddy. Bye. Uh, let's see here. How about uh, Ty in Vegas? Hey, Jimmy, how's it going, man? Thank you good, for taking the call. Um, so I've been doing stand-up for like five years and some change now. I just did four year, uh, four days in LA and it was really, really good. I'm, I'm, I want to make that move. I'm ready to become professional and I just want to know, like, do you have any advice for a young comic to avoid the pitfalls that I've heard of so many of my, uh, so many other guys have made the same mistakes, you know, just thinking that they got it before they don't. Like, what, what do you, what can you say to make it a little bit easier for me? Put your career first. I mean, that's the, I don't know if you're funny or if you're going to make it, but put your career first. That's what you got to do. Um, if you're going to go out to L.A., really do it. Really go out there. Really go on auditions. Don't try to build an amazing social life and just have fun and get drunk every night. Write material. Tape record yourself. You know what I mean? Like, don't, obs don't obsess with just... Uh, the scene itself, but make sure that you get good and make sure that you don't get lazy and that you go out every night and do gigs and tape them, okay? That's what worked for me. Yeah. I, uh, I hit the road after my first year because Vegas just wasn't the place for it, so I right. kind of cut my teeth with a lot of people, and I just really want to immerse myself in a place where 
people better than me are doing it. Like, I really wanted to come to New York and do it, but I'm in Vegas, so it's just easier to go to L.A. Yeah, it's a shorter drive. It's a quicker move. But, um, you know, I, I, that's what I would suggest. Make sure you tape yourself and you dedicate yourself. And then even if you don't get where you want, you'll never think, oh, I should have put more effort into it. But don't be lazy about it. That's my most important advice. Right on, brother. Hey, I forgot what special it was you did, but the one that had the hat rack with Patrice's hat on it, man, I love that so much, man. So Thank you. Yeah, that was the end of Please Be Offended. I appreciate it. Yeah, long live Patrice, brother. Thank you so much, man. I can't wait till you guys come back to Vegas, and I appreciate it. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. I only got one minute left. Uh, Rex in Oregon. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, man? Um, so I'll get to it quick. I love your work, by the way. I love Thank that. you. You're, you're amazing. Anyway, um, so I, I got married like almost two years ago and like, I mean, I, I've, I played in bands and I've toured and I've like been all over the U.S. I've played 43 of the lower 48 states and I've had a lot of women, a lot of sex. Um, I was married before and I always had this, this huge sex drive and like my, my ex-wife couldn't keep up. And then with this new girl, it's like, all I have to do is just walk up and barely touch her, and it's just like immediate mountainy position, you know? It's just like she is always wanting it all the time and always down for it. But for some reason, it's like my sex drive is dropping now that I can, like, I don't have to even try for it. Like, literally, I could, I could literally, like, walk in to the bedroom right after taking this nasty, huge shit, and she'd be like, and I'd be like, I want some sex, and she'd be ready to go, and it's just yeah, like... Yeah, that, that's like, something, the lack of challenge, because men tend to be hunters, so the lack of, that's why when a bear's going to eat you, they say play dead, you know what I mean, because he won't be interested. Half of it is the hunt. Males like the hunt, and a lot of times when we have what we think we wanted, we are like, ugh, I'm bored, it's no challenge, but if she started yeah. holding back on the pussy, so, uh, you know... I don't know. Maybe you have to talk to her about it, or maybe you have to do a little role play or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, because we talk all the time, and we have a great relationship. We're best friends, you know. It's it's awesome. I married my best friend. She's amazing. We're great friends before we even started dating, and it's just one of those things where it's just like I'm nervous that like if I don't keep up with her sex drive, that she's going to eventually cheat on me. Because I know I'm never going to cheat on this woman. I'm you know, fat, hairy, disgusting, nasty, bloated piece of shit. And she's like seven years younger than me and amazingly hot and sexy. And, you know, like, how old are you? Huh? How old are you? I'm 30. Oh, okay. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Maybe you should have your testosterone checked. And then you may, it's probably nothing wrong with it, but get it checked to make sure. And then uh, just see, think about what you really want sexually from her. You know, that's what I have to do sometimes. Because men are taught that we're supposed to always want to fuck, and that's just not the case. So maybe really sit down and go, what do I want when I fuck this woman? Do I want to be dirty or do I want her to slap my face? Do I want her to hold out? Do I want her to dominate me? Like, think about what you really want and then see if you can get her to do it. You know what I mean? Because just pussy being available all the time, most guys wouldn't want that as much as we say we would. I got to run, man. I'm already running late. I apologize for not giving you more time. No, it's all right, man. I love your work, and I hope to see you soon. You should come to Oregon and play some live shows, man. Thanks so much, buddy. Take care. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Thanks for listening to The Jim Norton Show. Hear all that advice whenever you want to on demand at SiriusXM.com slash on demand. On demand. On SiriusXM is real.